Hi guys, Ronnie here. Before I start, I'd like to answer to a question that has been popping up uh, recently after my videos uh, regarding look bicycles and I would like to say that no, I'm not sponsored uh, in any way or form by look bicycles. It's just the fact that now that I'm uh, staying in Italy for a couple of days per month uh, they were helpful enough and kind enough to let me use uh, some of their test bikes so they saved me the hassle of bringing my own bikes over here and this way I can still do a little bit of training in uh, these conditions. So that's the main reason that I'm bringing you this content and nothing else, just out of pure interest I thought that it might be a bit of an addition to the channel. Uh, so this bike here, unlike the bikes that I show on my channel normally, is a typical mid-range road race bike. It's also a pretty modern one. The frame has only been released last year. Uh, it has hydraulic uh, disc brakes and DI2 Shimano shifting, which uh, as you'd expect works flawlessly on both ends, uh, just like a super high-end Durace build or SRAM Red ETAP build, ETAP Axis build, whatever. Uh, you might compare it to, it just works. Uh, what I want to address here today is, because I've had some of these questions when people saw this bike on my Strava account, uh, how does it feel to go back uh, basically to a mid-range bike after riding all those super bikes? And today I want to point out the differences. If we talk about ride quality and handling, uh, I have to tell you, <clears throat> if you don't have a computer or data uh, and you don't know much about them there is no way of telling which bike you're riding because it has the same handling same responsiveness uh, to its same feel ride quality is very good so just from these subjective factors it's uh, really really not that much of a difference of course i've changed a couple of things uh, just to suit my liking so as you can see I have my Wahoo head unit here and to record the data I have uh, 140 mil 17 degree 3 t stem just to bring it up to my spec I have my speed plate pedals which might seem like a bit of a sacrilege on a look bike and most importantly I have a stages power meter crank arm just uh, so I know my power, I would, wouldn't would really like to ride a bike without a power meter nowadays. So these are the things I've changed and additionally the Bontrager flare right just to uh, keep me safe out there. <clears throat> so that's pretty much it. That's the only change, the only changes I've done uh, to this bike. Uh, and honestly, as I said, from subjective ride feelings you can't really tell it's not a super high-end bike. The thing uh, becomes quite obvious though when I start comparing my data and comparing uh, the power numbers to the speeds I'm doing. So that's uh, where the most obvious difference is because you have to really work a lot harder on a bike like this than on a fully optimized super bike uh, that I have at home. So. If you think about it, it might sound silly because it, some people like to say it's all about the rider, but <clears throat> now I would like to point out all the differences and optimizations that this bike doesn't have and suddenly those watts just uh, add up rapidly. So the biggest factor in aerodynamics is the position of the rider and I have that dialed with this stem, so that's, uh, that's no issue, no real loss or gain either side. Well, if we start from the front of the bike, uh, we don't have integrated cables that cause drag. The Wahoo is pretty arrow for what it is. Uh, we don't have a super narrow flat top arrow handlebar and an integrated stem to it. So those are uh, losses immediately. Then uh, we don't have of course an aerodynamically shaped frame which in itself might not be that much of an issue. Then we have of course regular box section rims uh, so of course that's not ideal tire wise though uh, we're faring pretty well because the Hutchinson uh, Fusion 
is one of the fastest uh, tires on the market when set up tubeless. Unfortunately these aren't so that's a loss right there for the tube inside. Uh, then if you go further of course the frame is a big aspect but doesn't uh, mean as many gains or as many watts as you might think. The wheels uh, are much more important and the tires uh, set up properly. Then another major loss uh, if I compare this to my bikes is the drivetrain particularly <clears throat> that the drivetrain efficiency doesn't only matter at high speeds uh, like aerodynamics but always as long as you're pedaling the bike which should be most of the time so starting from the bottom bracket no optimized or ceramic bearings uh, so that's one bit uh, the pedals are the same so no issues there chain wise as you can see nasty mucky test bike chain no super clean molten speed wax friction optimized chain that's the biggest loss I think easily 10 watts right there at threshold power even 15 uh, then no optimized or oversized jockey wheels in the rear uh, no optimized wheel bearings and yeah I think that's pretty much it and also no uh, optimized one by setup with ideal gearing gear ratios chain line etc so if you add all these up Mm, then I think it's not that much of a surprise that you need I reckon at least 30 watts more to pedal this bike at the same speed uh, than one of my own bikes that I used to have or ride back at home so yeah I think uh, this sums it up pretty neatly it's still a very enjoyable very nice bike to ride but if you take all these gains and losses into consideration then you can easily see where the difference comes up and in, race, in a race situation that can I think mean the difference between winning and losing so yeah there you have it uh, I think that's all for today I'll be heading back soon uh, back home where I have tons of new stuff coming up so if you'd like to see that then don't forget to tune in later on and subscribe to the channel thanks for watching and see you next time